YouTube! Tuba, like a tuba, how is it going? It's Multiplier here too. Give you some music industry advice and it's all about the follow-up email. So before I tell you all the details about how you do it properly and when to do it and all that sort of stuff, let me paint some context. I was gonna say paint a picture, but no, we're going to paint some context. How many times have you sent an email to somebody or a Facebook message? Could be to a DJ, a company, a record label, some promoter, whatever it is. You've sent an email and you've waited a few days or a few hours, however impatient you are. You've waited some time and you've heard nothing back. Then what do you do? You give up. No, don't do that. What you need to do is send a follow-up email. Joking aside though, I was a little bit flippant just there. The follow-up email is insanely important. I'm not exaggerating when I say 80 to 90% of all the work, all the opportunities, all the everything I've done in the music industry has come about from a follow-up email. Literally 80 to 90% of everything I've done in the music industry from gigs, uh, doing stuff for websites, videos, sample packs, everything at all, when you combine it all into the mega package that is Multiplier, 80 to 90% of all of that wouldn't have happened without the follow-up email. So it's important, how do you actually do it? It's nice and simple. Say three days to a week after you've sent the initial email, what you need to do is send a follow-up email with a simple bit of something along the lines of, hey, the name could be Barry or whoever you're emailing. So, hey Barry or hi Barry, uh, hi Barry works. Hi Barry, just following up, have you had a chance to check this out yet? Thanks. Adam, or whatever your name is, or something to that effect. There are lots of different ways you can phrase this, but do keep it simple. In fact, if you Google follow-up email, there are a few different ways you can phrase following up with this, comma, have you had a chance to look at this yet? Question mark, thanks, name. You know your name. But also keep it simple. Don't throw any new information in there. Don't repeat yourself from the previous email. And also don't send multiple follow-up emails in almost all situations. One is all you can get away with. As I say, between say three days and a week or two after the initial email. About the only time you can get away with multiple follow-ups is if you've already loosely agreed to do something or firmly agreed to do something already. So maybe you're emailing a promoter and the promoter's already said they'd love to get you back out in February or July, whatever month it is, but you have already loosely agreed to do something. In which case, in the second follow-up email, you can send something like, just organizing my schedule, just organizing my calendar, are we still doing this? Or again, something similar, but importantly, in the second follow-up, you're not just giving a general reminder, a general nudge in the email box, you're providing a specific reason for needing to know about what you're needing to know about. Oh, also in terms of timing of the follow-up, there's a bit of an exception and that would be basically tasks that require batching. So if you're sending a demo or a track to an artist or a track to a label, then that artist or that label is going to be listening to your track or your demo in batch. So if you send a demo to a label, they may not be listening to demos for another two or three weeks. And so sending that follow-up email, maybe three days after you send the demo, isn't appropriate because most artists, most DJs, most labels don't listen to demos every single day. And so you need to give it enough time for the artist, for the DJ, for the label owner to listen to your track first of all. So in the case of say, yeah, sending a track to an artist or a DJ or a record label, do give it a few weeks, maybe three weeks or four weeks or maybe three Three weeks, two weeks, some amount of time. More than a week though, more than a week and a half, but less than say a month. It's not an exact science, but it is important to differentiate between those two different types of interactions. A personal interaction with somebody who simply has to look at your email and have a two second think or a 10 or a minute think and respond versus an interaction that requires somebody to look at your stuff that they may do in batches. So I suppose that also applies to YouTube channels, SoundCloud groups, blogs, basically anything that requires batching, give it two or three weeks say. Um, what else do you need to know about the follow-up email? Um, 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 follow-up emails, do it. I suppose there's some more advice, make sure you do it. Build it into your muscle memory or set a reminder on your telephone to follow up about Project X or Project Y or Z, whatever project you're wondering about or email interaction. Do send a... Uh, Put a reminder on your phone. You can send the follow-up email and then delete the reminder and then you never have to do the second follow-up because it's almost never appropriate. But then you've followed up and it, and it's, it's just done. So that's good. And then you'll remember to do it because you've got the reminder on your phone. At least that's how my brain works. Um, but my brain is weird. Fantastic. And there you go. That is the follow-up email. Music industry advice from Multiplier. I'll catch you guys on the flippity flip.